ജോൺസിറ്റി <laughs> 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 we have to wear the personal protective agents including mm. the gloves mm. have you used that uh, when yes. you are examining it is the most important thing because we don't know what type of jaundice it is mm. whether it is hepatitis b or c b can even uh, spread through intact skin so that you should remember uh, breathing uh, respiratory rate is 18 per minute saturation 98 percentage in room air air entry bilaterally equal no added sounds circulation bp is 114 bar 60 mm of mercury pulse rate is 86 per minute all peripheral pulsations equally felt bilaterally indisibility gcs is 15 by 15 bilateral pupils equal and reacting to light what is the importance of pulse in jaundice mm, bradycardia bradycardia is seen in obstructive, obstructive jaundice uh, exposure uh, patient is febrile and grbs is 120 mg per deciliter At Jinx to primary survey, we had done a CBC CRP point of care showing WBC count of 5.34, hemoglobin 10.5, platelet 1,57,000, CRP 7.61. <coughs> we had taken a <coughs> VBG. There is no acid-base imbalance, no lactate uh, elevation. Sodium was 134 and potassium is 4. Sample history. 21 year old female with no known comorbidities presented with history of fever since 5 to 6 days it was associated with vomiting which was non projectile non bilious uh, which was 3 to 4 episodes per day since 4 days she also noticed yellowish discoloration of urine and sclera since 2 days upon further questioning she gave history of conception of food from outside there was no history of any bleeding manifestations altered mental status abdominal distension or itchy on examination patient is conscious oriented uh, ictus was present no pallor cyanosis so altered mental status you told no yes. in a jaundice case how do you assess the uh, uh, mental status what all things you have to look um, flaps can be present okay. whether the patient is uh, drowsy or not okay. any uh, disordered sleep rhythm okay. what are the grades of hepatic encephalopathy um zero is no uh, patient is uh, no ch- behavioral changes mm-hmm. one there is um, uh, flaps are present uh, altered sleep rhythm altered first sleep. is altered sleep rhythm okay. uh, then, then grade 2 there is flaps and okay. slight behavioral changes uh, three the patient is um, disoriented, disoriented but flaps may be absent so then, why flaps has to be there because you are not able to examine that so we are not getting uh, you will not be able to examine the patient but it has to be there four comatose okay what is his flap where all you will get flap any encephalopathy hepatic encephalopathy okay. septic okay encephalopathy. what is the reason for that um the uh, hepatic encephalopathy the <coughs> bilirubin um the patient what is the flap what is his flap position there is a joint position, position sensation, sensation controlled by your brain that is interrupted that's all Okay, that's why you are getting interrupted movement of the hand. Okay. Um, <coughs> uh, pallor was not present. Ictus present. No cyanosis. Clubbing. Lymphadenopathy or edema. Uh, per abdomen soft. Not distended. Non tender. Bowel sounds are present. Uh, said, uh, CNS. No flaps are present and no focal neurological deficit. Patient conscious. Obeying commands. Respiratory system. Uh, bilaterally air entry equal. No added sounds. <coughs> and uh, cvs uh, s1 s2 normally heard no murmurs uh, course in the hospital we had sent an lft routine blood investigations and the total bilirubin was 7.1 mm. direct was 5.1 stot 1496 and stbt was 2373 which all conditions you get uh, stot stbt is in thousands hepatitis hepatitis then very few conditions you get uh, stot stbt in thousands whereas whereas in uh, uh, many conditions you can get in hundreds like dengue fever leptospirosis malaria all these things stot stbt rise will be in hundreds which all condition you get in thousands very few conditions are there that you have to tell one is hepatitis viral hepatitis then
failure. Your failure is due to what? Paracetamol. Drug induced. Drug induced hepatitis. Toxin drug induced hepatitis. Third one? Ischemic hepatitis. Like post cardiac arrest if you see many patients STOT, SCPT will be very high. Okay. So these are the very important conditions where you get very high STOT, SCPT. One is viral hepatitis, toxic hepatitis including drug drug overdose. Third one is ischemic hepatitis. Uh, total proteins for 6.5, albumin 2.8 and globulin 3.67, hmm. um, urea 12, creatine 0 0.05, sodium was 133.4 and potassium was 3.9. Albumin is low than globulin. 2.8. Okay. PTINR was 16 and 2.01 seconds. Uh, upon other… Uh, PTINR uh, is elevated. Elevated. Hmm. Is uh, it dangerous or not? What is the warning point? Where will you uh, like… Uh, uh, think that it is going to be dangerous for the patient. What level? 4. 4? INR? 1.5. 1.5 is a uh, danger sign. Any patient who is having normal, normal uh, liver, suppose it is more than 1.5, it is a danger sign. Okay. If already is having liver disease, then it is okay. Uh, upon uh, further investigation, hepatitis A uh, virus IgM was found to be positive. Mm -hmm. uh, patient was started on um, <coughs> hepatoprotective measures mm -hmm. like bronac infusion. What is bronac? Uh, NSTL cysteine. NSTL cysteine. 150 mg per kg IV infusion, okay. 200 ml DNS. And empirical antibiotics, cephaparosone cell bactam was started. What is the need of cephaparosone cell bactam here? What is What are the complications of Sefparazon in this type of cases. You have to tell me. You should know now when you are starting an antibiotic, you should know what complications it can create in your case. Is that, uh, uh, what is it? Sefparazon sulbactam is uh, an antibiotic, third generation cephalosporin. Is it required in this patient or not? First of all, you tell me that. Viral hepatitis. This viral hepatitis, it is not at all required. Okay. If at all you want to give an antibiotic, what antibiotic you want to give? Liver protecting. There is no liver protecting antibiotic. No. Uh, Rifaximin is the drug of choice to sterilize the gut. Okay. What is the problem of sepparazone in this patient? What happens to your INR in sepparazone? Oh, it will be elevated, it will be dere deranged. That's not a problem in the patient, but you get a like unusual, uh, unfo uh, like uh, abnormal value, the INR will be elevated. That may create a confusion. Okay, so unnecessarily, we should not create a confusion. It will not produce any clinical bleeding, but it can elevate the okay. INR. So we have to be very careful. Yeah. Unnecessarily, we should not put uh, sepparazone in this patient because it is not required. Mm. Okay. Um, you can give ceftriaxone, no? that is equally okay. effective. Um, blood culture and urine cultures were negative um, and patient was improved after well, 4 to 5 days and hmm. was discharged. Okay. So, what are things you will follow up in a patient of acute viral hepatitis A? Um, Is it a notifiable disease? Yes. We have to notify. First of all, we have to inform the authorities that there is an hepatitis A. Suppose it is in a hostel, we have to inform the hostel authorities. Okay, so that is first thing. Second thing, when you are examining the patient, you have to use personal protective agents, otherwise you also may get the disease. Then, how how do this uh, hepatitis A spread from one person to other person? Fecal oral route. So, we have to be very careful, we have to find out what is his job. What is this person's job? She's a student, 21 year old. So, he is in host, uh, staying in a hostel. So, we have to inform the hostel. Suppose he is a, a chef or something, then we have to inform uh, uh, to authorities okay. that also. Then, PTNR is elevated. How do you manage it? INR is, is 2. It is not a good sign. How do you manage it? Will you give FFP? Will you, will you give or not? Yes or no? Why? It can create uh, bleeding, no? That is a problem. See, we can give and uh, 
reduce the bleeding tendency. But we will be masking one important sign for or important lab investigation which may help in patients liver failure like uh, to detect liver failure and he may be a, a person for a transplant so that will be masked by your ffp so we are we should not give ffp can we give vitamin k in this patient it is only required in obstructive jaundice okay not required here at all it is not uh, required what are the liver protective agents you know L ornithin, L aspartate, and uh, N acetylcysteine. These are the only two uh, agents we can give. What are the uh, 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 what are the measures you should take in this patient to prevent hepatic encephalopathy? Because he is already having elevated INR, he is already having low albumin, so his liver is in failure mode. So how do you prevent hepatic encephalopathy in this patient? To prevent the constipation. Okay, most lactulose. important is constipation should be prevented. What do you give? Lactulose. Lactulose. Then, uh, can you give uh, other type of uh, laxative for this instead of lactulose? Yes or no? Huh? Can you give lactulose in diabetic patients? Yeah. It's sugar, no? Mm. Can you give? It is a non-absorbable sugar and it reduces the pH of the intestine. These are the two important actions whereas if you give other types of crimaffin or something, <coughs> they are not going to reduce the pH, they only produce diarrhea. So they are not that effective comparing with the uh, lactose. Okay. So lactose has to be given to initiate uh, one or two stools per day. Then Look, cut sterilization. Rifaximin. Rifaximin. What is the dose? 400 mg. 400 mg. TID. Okay, then um, some two preparations are available 400 mg TID and 550 BD. Both are equally effective. Mm. Then we have 400 mg mm. TID. Um, look for um, correct if, if there is hypokalemia. If there is hypokalemia, we have to correct. What is the potassium level in this patient? Um, 3.9. Okay, so is it uh, should, should we should, correct it? No. It is not required. Then uh, look for upper GI bleed. No, this is acute uh, this problem, no? If it is upper GI bleed, you have to uh, yeah. remove the blood from the intestine then. Any secondary infections. What is the most common problem you are going to face in this type of patients in emergency room? A patient who is having hepatitis, is not taking adequate food. What is the most? Hypoglycemia is the most important. Dehydration is there. Yeah. Dehydration plus hypoglycemia. What is the blood sugar value of this patient? Uh, it was uh, one... Um, 120. 120. So, ideally we have to put him on uh, dextrose uh, saline infusion continuously because yeah. we have to prevent dehydration yeah. and hypoglycemia because they are not going to take adequate feeds. Yeah. Okay, these are the important things. What are the other things you, so you already have a uh, elevated PTNR. What are the things you have to monitor in this patient? Um, any bleeding manifestations hmm. should be uh, looked for. Hmm. Suppose this patient develops altered behavior on the second day or third day. What are the things you do? Brain imaging. Brain imaging. Most important thing is we have to do a CT scan if the patient deteriorates. What is the role of ammonia in this patient? Ammonia. Ammonia gets uh, not, as the liver is not functioning, it doesn't get metabolized into urea mm. and the ammonia can cross the blood brain barrier and encourage the brain causing it into mm. encephalopathy, metabolic mm. encephalopathy. Mm. I am asking the lab investigation. Lab ammonia. investigation to categorize, like to see if there is hepatic. Mm. Mm. There is no added value. Ammonia will not tell you the severity of mm. uh, the disease. So, mm. no need to frequently monitor ammonia if you already know that this is due to hepatic encephalopathy ammonia will be definitely elevated but that level of ammonia will not correlate with the level of hepatic encephalopathy that's all you should know okay you want to add something king's college criteria hmm. for uh, king's college criteria is for transplant okay uh, it is acetaminophen induced and non acetaminophen induced hmm. If it is acetaminophen induced, the, the criteria are arterial pH less than 7.3, mm. INR more than 6.5, mm. creatine more than 3.4 mg per deciliter, grade 3 or 4 hepatic encephalopathy. What is this creatine value? Why the creatine is elevated here? Hepatorenal. 
ஹெப்பட்டோ ரீனல் சென்ட்ரோம் ஹெப்பட்டோ ரீனல் சென்ட்ரோம் ஒக்கர்ஸ் ஓன்லி வென் த லிவர் ஃபெயில்ஸ் ஓகே செலக்டிவ் ஹைப்பர் பர்ஃபியூஷன் ஆஃப் கிட்னி ஹேப்பன்ஸ் தட்ஸ் வை கிரியாட்னி செலிவேட் ஓகே and other predictors are lactate more than 3.5 even after fluid resuscitation mm-hmm. and phosphate more than 3.75 mg per deciliter at 40 to 90 what fluid you can give uh, in when the lactate is elevated what fluid should be elevated uh, avoided ringer lactate all lac- lactic acidosis uh, we should avoid ringer lactate or not these are the common things we come across in all lactic acidosis cases should, should we avoid ringer lactate or not eh no. eh no means what is the answer okay. because actually the lactate uh, more in the ringer lactate is very small that's okay mm-hmm. but uh, normally doctors will have feeling to avoid uh, ringer lactate in lactic acidosis that is wrong you can use lactate sorry ring, ringer lactate in lactic acidosis except in except in liver failure except in liver failure you can use ringer lactate in lactic acidosis so if this patient develops high lactate because of hypoperfusion you should avoid ringer lactate there you can give normal saline okay yeah, non acetaminophen induced Uh, pt is more than 100 ina more than 6.5 mm. non a here it is only 2 2 okay non a non b viral hepatitis mm. drug induced or in, uh, indeterminate etiology mm. time from jaundice to encephalopathy if it is more than 7 days mm. age less than 10 year or more than 40 year mm. pt more than 50 seconds mm. serum bilirubin more than 17.4 okay so here nothing is there only pt ina was slightly okay. elevated mm. and uh, albumin was low. low okay but both of them got corrected afterwards after 5 days she was discharged okay what is the role of ultrasound in this patient should we do ultrasound in this patient yes or no you have to tell if you know you tell yes if you don't know you tell no should we do ultrasound or not is it going to benefit you hmm? what is the age of this patient 21 21 ultrasound will tell you whether this patient is having a pre existing liver disease or not mm-hmm. only thing is by 7 days of disease his albumin has dropped to a level of 2.5 that is unusual okay most of the conditions it takes some time to drop but mm-hmm. he may have some other problem that's why albumin is low but when the albumin is low stot stpt is very high and uh, ptnr is elevated uh, normally if you do ultrasound so sometimes you can see uh, chronic changes but this b- boy is only very young and uh, we don't expect any change okay that's all anything else you want to add nothing okay thank you